cease now. Things are better now. Amen. And uh, we just still believe in God. So we're going to take a moment to continue to pray. Me and Apostle Larry had personal prayer with him yesterday, uh, yesterday morning. Uh, but, you know, whenever you're going under the doctor, amen, you just got to, you know, don't, you know, we put our trust in Dr. Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Because I may know he's a great, great physician. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, we just lift up our brother once again. And we thank you for bringing through the surgery and bringing through the night. And we thank you for the progress. But we're not done yet. We believe in you for a full recovery, God that everybody part's going to function to the perfection that you created to function. And we pray now even that you comfort and take away that pain, God. But we know he's in a lot of pain, as we heard this morning, but a little better than yesterday. But still, God, you're the God of all comfort. So we ask you now to give comfort to him. Glory to God. Comfort his body, comfort his wife and children's hearts, God, as we know they are going through a little bit for their loved ones. So we just thank you that you can do all things and you do all things well. And you are the Lord God that healeth thee and, and you are still in the healing business. And so we just turn him over to you. And that's all we know to do because you can take care of him better than we can. And you said cast all our cares on you because you care. So we give that one to you as well, that your apostle stands whole. I pray for everyone else at the sound of my voice that they heal from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. And I decree and declare that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. I decree and declare that their best deeds are not behind them, but are ahead of them. I decree and declare that this day, something good, something special, a blessing is coming their way. I decree and declare that favor is coming from you and man. I decree and declare favor is coming from you and man, God, and the people that you assign to us, God, to bring that favor. We pray now that nothing happens to them, that they can deliver what it is you called them to do. I pray for open doors. I pray for open doors. I said, I pray for open doors. I pray, God, that we'll be granted the desires of our hearts because we are proven over and over how much we love you. And so I thank you, as Pastor Carlin alluded to the other night, the other night, that there will be no financial issues, God. How do you heal finances right now, God? Do something with these bank accounts, God. And you know that we're not suffering. It's because we've been obedient. And Sister Betty shared, God, it's because we've been sowing into the kingdom. It's because we've been sowing seed. And your first law you put in motion was as long as the earth remains, seed time harvest. So I pray now for a financial harvest for everyone who've been planting seeds, God. They've been casting their bread upon the waters, and now it is time for the waters to bring back their harvest. Mm -hmm. And so we thank you for anointed service this morning. Thank you for healing men. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for financial breakthrough. Thank you for open doors. And now we just give you all glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise our King. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory to God. You guys hear that okay? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No matter what the doctor says, Jehovah has the final say. No matter what my bills may say, Jehovah has the final say. I have, I have no reason to fear. I have no reason to fear. The Lord is my life. The Lord is my life. I have no I have, I have no reason to fear. I have no reason to fear. The Lord is my light. The Lord is my light. Tell me who has the final say. Jehovah has the final say. Tell me who has the final say. Jehovah has the final say. No matter what the doctor says, Jehovah has the 
final say. I know my word, my money says. Jehovah's the name. I have, I have no reason to fear. The devil is alive. Like no other. 
Play that young door. Stream like no other. Hallelujah. Stream like no other. Reach as to me.
Jesus, you're worthy. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. You're muted. Hallelujah. I'm Can you hear us now? Yes. Can you hear me now? You can talk to me. Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? I hear you now. I hear you now. Okay. All right. Any feedback? <laughs> If you can hear me clear, wave your hand. Try some new technology, and I don't like this camera. This camera go everywhere you go, man. You hide behind the couch, it follows you. Like, <laughs> you no, know, Larry kept walking back and forth. They kept changing the camera. See, I'm like, oh my god, I might have to put some shoes on. Usually, I can hide my feet. This camera get it all. <laughs> like one of the cameras they use, hey man, on TV. So that's why I had to leave. Make sure you know my grippers was okay. Wasn't no grips in the game. It didn't catch it all. Amen. It, it mind this camera remind me of God. He catches all. Ooh, Hello, all, right. You, all right. You know what I mean? Let me right. tell you something. You ain't got no bad camera, no videos, stuff. Man, mm -hmm. every word and deed we gonna be judged on. Amen. Somebody amen. say amen. Amen. I'm gonna say that in English. Every word and deed. And so you might get past me. You might get past Sister Betty. But I'm telling you what, you ain't getting amen. past God. All right. Amen. All right. He, when you go to court, amen. He, he gonna come and say, "Yep, that's you." There ain't gonna be no Rodney King and all that stuff. Nope. Here's the evidence right here. Amen. amen. Because I got, amen. I say, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a just. I got a son who a just lawyer. Come on, I'm a just judge, and we got the best security cameras. Amen. Somebody, and that's why from here on you got to get serious. And not saying that you're not about how you're living, what you're doing, what you're saying, because he says not some words. Not some deeds, Amen. every word. I know he gonna check me on some stuff I said. Oh my God! Amen. 
Amen. That joke you said, uh -huh, yeah, uh, you, might, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you better joke like I'll do. Amen. Uh, somebody say every word and every deed, and and that's okay too because that don't have to be bad. What about all the good we said? Come on, somebody. Amen. What about the Amen. good? Like, 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 can you go a whole day without saying something negative about somebody? Come on, that's what you ought to practice. Try to go a whole day without saying something negative. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. That's an ugly card. Nah, nah, man. I, you know, just just give somebody a compliment. The Bible said we both do that. Amen. All the time, really. Come on. Encourage one another. Somebody say encourage one another. And sometimes we feel like we can't have a good day unless we say something bad. That's just our nature. Come on. And I mean, no, if that's you, you need to change that. It's okay, man, to say, hey, it's all right. It's okay. Come on. Matter of fact, hey, man, I'm, I'm going to start here. Sister Betty, you're an awesome woman of God. That should be easy for us. Hello, somebody. Glory to God. Somebody say, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Al, you tell better jokes than I do. Come on. Okay, there it is. That's his name. <laughs> all right. Some of y'all need to stop telling jokes. Now, see, that's not encouraging. See, see what I'm saying? See how easy that is? <laughs> Somebody say glory to God. But we only want to talk about that today. Amen. What's wrong? Something wrong? You just have to go in and out. Keep talking. I'm going to switch it to your phone. To, uh, to your phone? Yeah. All right. They're going to switch me out because I guess I'm going in and out. So just hold on because I ain't going to. Now I want to keep talking if they're going to hear some and not the rest. I'm just going to, hey, be still and know that he's God. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Amen. Some of them going in and out, but keep talking. Now I ain't going to keep talking. I don't want to waste my word. Amen. So I'm just going to be, we're going to be still and know that he's God. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. Anybody have a testimony? Hallelujah. Somebody said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You heard that, didn't you? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, well, if you have your Bible, go, go to Luke chapter one. Hallelujah. Did I freeze again? Yeah, they no. froze. So, everybody's not frozen. Luke chapter one. Amen. Verse 28. The 28th. Amen. Glory to God. And I'm just going to wait because I'm going to get on my wife's phone, which I like doing anyway. I ain't trying to be funny. All this new tech. Now, my phone never fails me. You on mute? No, I'm not. Can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm on mute. Carla, you're getting on my nerves sometimes. Mm. Hey, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. All right, I think he looked good today. Oh, I'm muted. Am I muted? No. You got an open mic, brother. Open mic. Oh, well, that's what's <laughs> going to happen when we get to see the maker face to face. Oh, to, to, yeah, I heard you. Matter of fact, you ain't even got to say it. He's going to know the thought. Somebody say amen. amen. I might have to minister on that today because somebody needs to hear that. Amen. He talking about no, you ain't even got to say it. God's so deep, Sister Betty. If we think it, and this, you know, you know, all the word right. is, all the word is, is a thought spoken. So really, a thought is just as bad as as, as a word. Right. Amen. Somebody said, uh oh, don't don't go there. That's all the word is. What's the word? A thought spoken. Thought spoken. So now, what if God allowed everything? to be vocal that was in your mind and what you was thinking. They let it come out. How many know he's a loving God? Because some of you be sitting there, I wish he shut up. Yeah. See, God would let that come out. <laughs> Luke 1, 28. That's his <laughs> Larry looked good in them nice shorts he got on. See, I ain't hating me. He got a little beach outfit on. And he got a little, uh, what's it called? Dock siders? What you call them shoes? Uh, uh, you know. The boat shoes. Boat shoes. Boat shoes. He got his boat shoes on. 
He looked like he going on a boat somewhere. I hope he don't today. This ain't negative because it's raining. <laughs> Amen. Maybe going fishing, but you know, it's okay to say that. Amen. Glory to God. Let's just jump right in this. Amen. Now, here's what I do want to say. Though we all, like I said, how I many know that you, every born again believer is really blessed because he's got the anointing. And so what I want to talk to you about today, I talked about it many other times. I'm going to come a different way today. Even though we all blessed, somebody say, amen, we bless the God. Some people are more blessed than others. Uh oh. Amen. But every born again believer is blessed. First thing you're born with the new life. Mm -hmm. Amen. He who knew no sin became sin for amen. you. In other words, you blessed with a new start. But watch it here. But we're blessed to different degrees. Amen. So every born again believer, no matter where their stance is and what they're doing and how they live it, they're blessed to a degree. Amen. amen. However, there's different degrees or um, dimensions of blessings. And that's where favor comes in. Amen. So, amen. so we all subject to blessings of God and some are more blessed. But I believe that according to the scriptures, amen, that favor has something to do with the ones who are more blessed than others. Somebody say the ones who are more blessed than others. Do you ever just meet that person and it seems like every time they talk to you, God did something else for them? Come on, I ain't talking about Creflo and I ain't talking about TDJ. I'm talking about people you know that you're so. It's like every time you talk to them, God did this and God did that. And sometimes it ain't that they bragging in themselves, it's they boasting in what God did and watch this here. And it ain't people just talking about 30 years ago. No, God, when he's blessing, he's still in the blessing business. When he's favoring, He's still in the favor business. So you ain't got to keep talking about something he did 20 years ago. Amen, somebody. Because that what you're really saying is he's not favoring you or blessing you now. Because if he was, you'll be talking about what he's doing now. now. Amen. Can, can amen. you say amen? Amen. Come on. And, you know, I, I mean, I, that's why sometimes the old testimony service used to make me mad. Instead of getting encouraged, I would get this girl. Well, about 15 years ago, the Lord got me up and got me on my way. Okay, what has he done in the last 15 years? Amen. Come on. In other words, I'm going to show you today that we have something to do with it. Mm -hmm. It ain't no different in your natural home when you did with mom and dad. How many of you have siblings? We all did. And even though they loved every sibling along, uh, 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 the same, and even though every sibling was blessed, watch us here in some ways and not others. One way they all blessed, they all had a, a roof over their head. They all ate dinner. But how many know there was different dimensions of blessings or favor that came to the ones who did better in school? The ones who did their chores. Ain't nobody hear me. The ones who obeyed the parents. Come on, somebody. We used to have this thing called allowance on Friday. Yeah. And so when you did the things that they asked you to do, come on, you got an allowance. Now, here's the thing. If you didn't do the things you, you asked to do, you didn't get an allowance, but you still ate dinner. Come on, somebody. Oh, oh yeah, you still ate breakfast. Anybody hear me? You yeah. still had lunch. Come on, you still had clothes on your back. You, so you still had a dimension of blessings, but there was something else that happened to those who actually did everything they was asked to do. And how many know the more you do what God asks you to do and the more that you please God, watch this here, man, there you'll get singled out. Come on, somebody say he'll single you out. He'll single you out. And so Luke 128 says, the angel went to her and says greetings to you who are what? Highly favored. Now, not just favored. So there are some people who are favored and there are some people who are what? Highly favored. The Lord is with you. Now, I don't know about you, but that's the kind of favor I want. I don't want the favor that comes to every born again believer. Uh, are you hearing me? That, you know, come on, we're in the right place with God. No, don't get me wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But I want to go higher than that because Amen. there's favor and then there's those who are highly favored. <laughs> those are the ones who watch this here that God has singled out to say, watch, I love all y'all the same, but this one here and that one there, they're doing the things I asked them to do. So I'm putting my favor on them. Let me help you. When yeah. God's favor is on you, I'm telling you right now, man who don't like you can't stop you. When God's favor on you, people trying to kill you can't kill you. Come on, remember we just talked about Joseph? Joseph wasn't just favored, he was highly favored. Mm -hmm. See, when you're highly favored, they can throw you in the lowest of the sister, and because you're highly favored, mm -hmm. you'll end up on top. Let me tell you the difference between favor and highly favored. When you're highly favored, you'll always end up on top. You'll be the head and not the tail. High. 
you'll be above and not beneath. And as much as man try to keep you down, you'll always pop up because you highly favor. There's an anointing on your life that says you can't keep me down. I wish somebody can hear me today. You can talk about me. You can talk about my mama. You can talk about me. But at the end of the day, I'm going to rise up because I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not me. I'm highly favor of God. And here's my evidence. God is with me. Amen. Mm. Amen. My God. Man, he'll have you meet people you don't know, and they got to bless you. They don't even know why they're doing it. I tell you why they're doing it. When God favors you, not only you know it, but they notice something different is about you. You Amen. ain't like the average Christian. I know many people go to church, but it's something different about life. It's something different about court. My God. Amen. Amen. Oh, man, I need some water. I ain't even made it through the first <laughs> scripture. That ain't even my message. That ain't even... I just want to just prove to you that there's a difference between favor and highly favor. Come on, so she said highly favor. And so I'm a, throughout the throughout the Bible, the word favor is used in various ways. I taught on that one time, the different kinds of favors. Amen. It can mean grace and acceptance. And ain't nothing wrong with that. Because how many know we all were saved by grace? Amen. Come on, somebody. We all got some favor there. Amen. But I want to talk to you about the, why the, it means a, the definition in the in, in the dictionary means approval. Somebody say approval. Approval. Support. Goodwill. Uh oh. Come on. Preferential treatment. Hmm. You know what preferential treatment is? Hmm. You come in there, they got ten degrees more than you, but you get the job and you got less degrees. No, y'all not here. Yeah, exactly. You out there trying to make it all about you, but you better do what God says do, because God can put you ahead of everybody who's more qualified. Right. See, right. You ain't him. There's right. others who have, might be more qualified, but watch this here. But the blood has not been applied. Ooh. And therefore, when you're highly favored, you shall not be denied because yeah. the yeah. blood makes you more qualified. Come on, than those who are qualified. Yeah. My God, yeah. I wish somebody. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't got hot. Why I put this shirt on? <laughs> oh my God. I feel like, like I don't try to get all cute. I might have to go change. I'm burning <laughs> up. It's so hot. I'm burning up. It's so hot. I'm burning up. Yeah, I need a fan. My God. I don't. I try to get all cute with y'all. Change the shirt I had on. And now I'm sweating like crazy. Because I'm telling you right now, I'm going to work this message today. Because God don't love Devin no more than nobody else. Now, I'm not going to take hold back. God got favor on me. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you right now, I can't even believe it. I'm talking to contractors. And it's like, if one contractor come do what he need to do, then he'll send me another one. And then they all just... My God. And then I asked him, well, how much I owe you for that? Man, this one guy gave me a price for something. My wife said, we can't pay you that. I had to ignore your leg. Yes, we can. Praise <laughs> God. Amen. Huh? <laughs> but we told him we're going to give him a tip. Boy, you hearing me. Glory to God. I couldn't believe it. But then I realized it's the favor. He said, notice. He said, nobody else get the prices you get. Y'all not hearing me. But let me tell you what put me in position. He said, because when I had nothing, you, you gave me something. You believed in me. You helped me start my business. You gave me business. And now this guy quit his job about three, three, three weeks ago on a Wednesday and been, had worked every since the next day on yes, Thursday. Amen. He started working at my house. My one neighbor came. Can you work on mine? And then my other neighbor came. Come on, somebody. And then now it's just coming and coming. This guy, got, he, 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 you know, he booked already through June. Amen. And he just started amen. his business. Most people quit a job. It takes time to build a business. And he says, I, he said, you're my boss. I said, no, I ain't your boss because I pay you. He said, no, you're my boss because without you, this wouldn't have happened. He realized that there's favor on me and saying that you are the one who started my business, even though I want to do it. And we're doing his business card for free. Got him all his clients. He got money lined up. I'm talking about major jobs. Are y'all hearing me? So he said, I can't charge you. Why is this here? Chloe, thank you, honey. Favor of God is on me. Put a fan right there. I can't charge you. What I charge everybody and listen, and I don't care how big I get, even though it looks like I'm blowing up, I'll always make you and your wife first. I'll Amen. stop what I'm doing to Amen. come around. That's preferential Amen. treatment. Come on. That's Amen. the favor I want to talk to you about today. God says, I'm ready to favor you, freedom, like that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So God. I told my wife, everything you want done, get the list out. Come on. And that's what we do. We he sent another contractor the same way. Guy ripped out all my cabinets in my kitchen. And put new cabinets in for a hundred dollars. Who wow. does that? Wow. Come on. Y'all not hearing me. Wow. And made us custom countertop. 
for a hundred dollars where he made her own countertop. We had to order nobody else. He made her own. He said, you get the equipment and I'll make your own and everything my wife wanted. He did that. And he did that for about a hundred dollars. Y'all not Amen. here, but praise Amen. God. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, what is that? It's the favor of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So I told my wife, get your list out, everything you want. I mean, no, you got to ride that favor. Amen. Amen. I said, you better ride that favor. Amen. Amen. Because watch it here. We're in a season of favor. And I'm telling you right now, what's the good news for you? That the anointing don't go up, it flows down. Mm -hmm. And if it's on me and you connect it, it's falling down on you even now. Right. Thank uh, you. Matter of fact, let's do as and receive the favor of God. And I ain't talking about ordinary. I'm talking Thank about, you. come on, let's do that. I'm talking about Thank highly favor. Yes. Man, what Hi. money can't, with you, if you ain't got the money, favor will make up for it. My oh, God. Yes. I'm telling you right yes. now, get ready. God Thank ready you, favor God. your business. Thank he you. ready favor your ministry. He ready favor your personal finance. He ready just favor your family. He ready favor everything that you touch. That's Thank the God, God that we serve. Thank Come on, somebody. You, it God. means above and beyond. God's ready to do above and beyond. Pre preferential treatment, approval, support. Come on, how many know you need support? Hey, child support got perverted by the devil, but child support was always good. God always supported his children. My God. Come on. That's what favor is. Giving my children what they need. Are you hearing me? And when they need it. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And all this is available to the believer. And we can look at the lives of many other characters, but everybody didn't walk in it. Somebody said everybody walked in it. Amen. So write this down. It's important to note that, watch this here. Favor isn't favoritism. Oh, okay. <laughs> Because we just get that, well, you know, God, 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 God uh, uh, death, he likes them more. No. Uh -uh. See, that that would be that would be a bad father. See, remember I talked about Joseph. That's what was Joseph's downfall in the beginning. He had a, to a bad start because his, his father helped his sons and them turn on him by loving him more. Amen. Amen. Favoring them more. Yeah, and them other ones, he knew to them, you know, even though, you know, everybody got some knuckleheads in the family, but you still got to love them all the same. See, loving the same and favoring the same are two different things. See, be, you love everybody the same, but favor don't come on everybody. Amen. Remember Cain and Abel? God couldn't favor Cain the way he favored Abel. He right. loved them both the same. Hello, somebody. Right. Somebody said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So God, everybody say, God loves everybody the same. God loves everybody the same. God doesn't have favorites. God doesn't have favorites. Thank you. Hello, somebody. However, he favors some above others. Amen. And write this down, favor, the favor of God can change your life. Mm. Amen. Amen. I mean, you being one dimension in your life, next thing you know, man, look how we live. <laughs> this is like how we get there. It's like Snoop Dogg. I ain't trying to promote the commercial, but on the beach, just chilling. <laughs> uh, come on, just chilling. I mean, getting paid to sit on the beach and make a commercial. I mean, come on. But come I mean, no, he ain't, we ain't got to promote nothing bad. Hello, somebody. Amen. But Amen. that's what God says. Take away the corona. Watch this here. Take away the corona. Get it? And then we'll be on them beaches soon, too. Amen. You'll catch what I'm talking about later when you see the Snoop commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Get the corona off the beach. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Hallelujah. He out there promoting corona. Now, we don't want that. Amen. He's Amen. promoting that. So here's some ways that, watch this here, that, the, that we can be highly favored as well. We don't just want to be favored, like get everything everybody else gets. We want to be singled out. We want preferential treatment. We want above and beyond favor. Anybody with me today? I mean, I mean, uh, unexplainable favor. I mean, glory to God. I mean, unusual favor. Come on, sir. I mean, oh my God. Can't even explain it with words kind of favor. You know, you go to talk to people about it, they think you're lying. There ain't no way in the world. Somebody going to build your debt in this day for $250. Ain't no way in the world somebody going to build you and then enclose your deck with a, a roof and screens all the way around for $100. Well, Amen. that just happened to me. Oh, Amen. you hear me? I didn't even go to that one. Amen. Hey, man, my, that's what my wife said. How much I, How much you going to charge us to um, put the screen on and a roof on the deck that you just built? Man charged me $250 out to build the deck and then another $250 to, put a, to enclose it with a screen and a roof. Y'all better hear me. That don't happen. My neighbor just got his done without the screen, $3,800. <laughs> just with the roof over his deck. I ain't want to tell him he ain't got the free. Right, right. <laughs> Amen. But I'm nicer to people than he is. Uh, so anyway, 
Number one, here's one way to get that highly favored. Write this down. This, uh, Proverbs 3, 1 through 4. This is one of my favorite. And whenever I talk about favor, I always put the scripture in. It says, my son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart. For they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Here we go now. Here's the key. Let love. Somebody say let love. Come on. Let love. Watch this here. And faithfulness never leave you. There's two key ingredients for you keeping you highly favored. Love and faithfulness. Come on, somebody. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Amen. Find them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor. Come on, somebody. Amen. And a good name in the sight of God and man. Amen. And so the first thing you got to do is you got to love God. Somebody say, God, love God. I love God. Because if you don't have a love for God, you're not going to try to please him. So God will never favor somebody who don't love him. Don't love him. Just like you ain't going to give favor to somebody who don't love you. All right. All right. Hello, somebody. Did you say one amen? One amen. That's it. Just one. Matthew uh, 25. <laughs> amen. You there? Say amen. Amen. And y'all know we preach this all the time. Amen. Let me just... Let's look at uh, 34 through 40. Amen. Amen. If you're there, say amen. Carolyn, can you read that? Yes. Okay. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, come, you blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, assuredly, I say to you, in as much as you did it to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. Amen. Amen. Wow. So here's the key. You got to love people. Amen. First, you got to love God. Come on. With all your heart. Come on. And now you got to love people. How do I know I love people? By reaching out. Come on, somebody. Caring for. Yes. When I was sick. Yes. Come on. Amen. Glory to God. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. Come on. That's why we do missions, y'all. It keeps the favor of God on our mm. ministry and on our life. And it keeps us in the position to continue to be favored. I don't Amen. just want to be favored. I want to stay favored. That's why we do the missions off. That's why we send them. That's why we help people. Somebody might say, well, why are you helping this guy with his business? I'm glad I did. But when I first went in there, I wasn't helping them to get prices like this. I'll never tell somebody what I want to pay. Amen. When you favor, when got favor on you, you ain't got to steal favor. Some people go around trying to steal favor. They see you with a nice watch on. Oh, that's a nice watch. They say it 10 times. Hope you say, here, you want it? Yeah. Nah, you ain't got to do all that. When the favor of God is on you, they already know that that's to watch you like, and boom, here you go. Let me just bless Amen. you with this. You ain't got to ask Amen. for it. You ain't got to, you know, come on, hooking crooks, peeping Amen. high, hooking and crooking. Y'all know what I'm talking about, conniving. Now you just got to love yeah. people. Come on. What are you doing for the kingdom? Hello, somebody. Amen. What are you doing for the kingdom? That's that's what it's about. What are you doing for, about God, the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is always about helping people, not just yourself. Amen. Amen. Who are you helping? Who are you reaching out to? Come on, somebody. Glory to God. What you doing for others? Oh. Come on. What I always say, whose life is better today? Because you're in it. That's when you know that you're in, you're, 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 what's it? you're loving people. Amen. Because you're putting your agenda, you got the mind of Christ, you're esteeming others above yourself. Amen. Amen. And so 
you know, that's what we got to look at. Let's look at our lives. Let's look at my schedule. Let's look at all that I do. It should involve you doing more for others than yourself. And once you reverse it, then you ain't got to do so much more for yourself. You know the reason why some of us working so hard to make it? Because we won't make the adjustment. God says, no, if you take care of my business, I take care of yours. It's people. It's, 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 it's people. Amen. Amen. You got it all backwards. You keep trying to do you, stealing it from God. God to say, bless this person. Mm -hmm. You putting away. The reason why I'm excelling ahead, I'm telling tell you right now. And Larry said it all the time. Man, I don't see nobody give the way to do. I'm always looking to give. I'm always looking to help. Amen. Did you know that this guy who started his business don't have no help? The last three days, my wife would tell you, guess who went out there and helped him? I'm the one paying him. And I'm out there working just as hard as him. He said, why are you doing this? I said, because you don't have no help right now. Amen. And, Amen. and you got to understand that I'm doing this because God told me to do it. He told me yesterday, he said, man, I don't know where I'd be without you. Not only helping me get the jobs, but man, I couldn't even do a lot of stuff without your help. Come on. Amen. I Amen. rolled up my sleeves and I told him, you focus on this. He cut all these trees down. I said, I'll load the trees up on the trail. I'm talking about big logs. Are you hearing me? I came in, I was dirty, right? Did you see me? I was so dirty. My man, the dawn ran from me. The uh, ivory ran from me. That stuff said, we can't help you. But you know, I like what it, you know, and then, and then I had this one guy who I worked with. He says, why would you help somebody like that? I was trying to explain to him, why do you help the guy that you pay? He has no understanding. I said, man, because that's how you get favor on you. Come on. And I ain't just do it to get favor. I just did it. It's the right thing to do. And then now my prices went even lower. I'm like, thank you. Then he said, I'm going to add this to it. I want all the stuff he adding on. Oh, I didn't even ask for it without charging me any money. Me and my wife was like, oh, no, he didn't. He going to do all that. He said, man, I want to make this look like the best thing I ever did. And I said, well, since you're doing that, I'm going to use this as advertisement for your business. He didn't do it for that, but that's what I'm going to do. So come on. So now he wants to make this look the best he can. And I'm telling him, I'm going to use it to advertise your business. See where we going with this? Amen. So now he keep making it look the best he can. And I ain't got to pay no more. I just keep telling him I'm going <laughs> to. And all this business Amen. he got. Because people come here, they, they admire his work. So we got cards we making for him and signs we making for him. Amen. You don't have to go there. But Ruth chapter 2, verse 11 and 12 says, Boaz replied, I've been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with a people that you did not know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you richly be rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Come on, yeah. praise God. Yeah. So yeah. Ruth found favor with Boaz because of the things she has done. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And James go on to say, faith without works is dead. dead. How you going to talk about you got faith and you ain't got no work? I'm telling you right now, you get to working on the behalf of others more than yourself. Come on. I'm telling you right now, then the God to get to work in that favor, not yes. only with him, but with man. Yes. Oh, my yes. God. Somebody yes. give God a hand clap. Yes. And that's why you can't be weary and well done. Come on. I know some of you get tired of missions often. I'm telling you right now, we had a prophecy on our six-year anniversary. And this ministry will never go down financially because of our mission-minded ministry. Mm -hmm. And not only the ministry, but anybody who sows into it. You ain't going down sowing in the missions because missions ain't Devin Parks and Cordy Parks' work. It's yeah. God's. Amen. He called us from the beginning. The poor, you'll always have. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And we ain't supposed to be the poor. Come on, somebody that he's talking about. But the reason yeah. why we're among those we always helping because we won't help the ones he tell us to help. All That's right. one thing about God. You'll catch that later. If you don't help the ones he tell you to help, you'll be living amongst the ones who need help, just All like right. that. All right. All right. Yeah. See, I'm trying to help somebody help somebody. You know, Amen. you know, the first sermon I ever preached. Amen. It's can you help a brother? Amen. That was that, I, and I believe that was God putting his message in me that everything you do will be predicated on this message. Amen. Like Noah's is going to rain. Everything Devin A. Park do, and the A used to be for something else, it's for Aaron, priest. Amen. My nickname, Amen. my middle name is Aaron. I didn't even know that. I'm, I was walking. I was born to be a preacher. Y'all not hearing me. But everything about me, my first message, and every time you hear me preach, something about what I preach always come about helping other people. I didn't put that. God put that in my heart. My Amen. missions, our mission started because I sit up all night watching Feed the Children. And when I'm hungry, people in Africa, my wife would say, how can you watch that? Not that she ain't have a heart. 
It was sad. I said, because we're going to do something about it. And now look what God is doing. My God, thank you for the prophecy, Sister Betty, that I got to get ready to go back to York. Come on, I'm ready because they need it. Come on. I remember the last time I was in London, a guy came to me and said the gospel was shrinking in London. I said, no, not anymore because I'm here. Amen. It ain't shrinking. Come on. Praise God. God didn't send me over there to shrink it. Send me over there to increase. I wish somebody could hear me. I don't know about you, but man, I'm praying who you want me help today, Lord. Amen. Amen. You out there storing that little bit of money for yourself. Look where it's getting you. Nowhere. Huh. I mean, it ain't getting nowhere. Man, you better give God something to work with. Somebody amen. say amen. And it'll help your attitude. It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. You know, when helping others, it also take your mind off of you. The root, amen. come on, the root of bitterness and all this other stuff is selfishness, sickness and all that. If you can get your mind off of you, well, one way to do it is helping other people. Help somebody else. Amen. Then you realize, too, that what you're going through ain't the worst. Mm. Right. You better than you giving God credit for, for sustaining your butt. Come on. Somebody said amen. Amen. Somebody said, I want to I want to be highly favored. I want to be highly favored. Come on, I don't, I don't just want to be favored. Come on, I want to be highly I favored. I want to be highly favored. Singled out. Singled Preferential out. Preferential treatment. Come on. Treatment. See, some of you think it's prideful to ask for that, but how is it prideful to ask for anything that the scripture said you can ask? Come on, Amen. the very first scripture said Mary, Mary was highly favored. Yes. Somebody say highly favored. Highly favored. Somebody say amen. Amen. Revelations 2 6. You don't have to go there. But you have you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nickelodeons, which I also hate. One way to keep favor on you and get out hate what God hates. Come on, write that down. You gotta hate what God hates. And that means you gotta make a stand sometimes when you got if you see people on the job, and I'm talking about bosses and all that, mistreating people, you might be the one who gotta stand up that God hates that. And you all might right. have to like put your job on the line and be the one saying we shouldn't be treating others like that. Amen. Uh oh, Amen. I lost some people on that one. Because Amen. watch this here. How can you hate what God hates if you don't speak up against what God hates? Hmm. When you don't speak up, you're co-signing on to it. Amen. Mm. Come on. I ain't hearing nobody. Gotta hate what God hates. Because if you don't hate what God hates, there's no way you can love what God loves. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I mean, and that's the first scripture. You got to love God. How are you going to love God if you don't love what he, if he, if you don't hate what he hates? How am I going to love Courtney if I love what she hates? Because that's basically what she's saying. No, I love you, but here's the thing. I'm going to prove it by loving what you hate. <laughs> that don't even make sense. Think about it. I didn't even know how to say that. <laughs> So one way to prove that you love God, whatever he hates, you hates. Not people, things. Things, things. Because mm. I can show you some things the Lord hates the Bible talks about. Amen. Amen. The things that the Lord hates. Mm -hmm. The seven things. Yes. Amen. I preached it uh, your anniversary and yours. On when a man's ways please God. I said, well, how are we going to talk about oh, the ways to please God if we don't talk about what this pleases what him? This pleases him. And Proverbs tells us there's some things the Lord hates. Yes. And if we keep loving what he hates, then we ain't loving God. And then here's the problem with you loving what he hates. You're going to not love people the right way. Because most of it comes back around how we treat people. Lying, mm -hmm. a lying tongue. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let me just move on from that. <laughs> now, let me just stay there. You got a lying problem and all that. The Lord hates lying tongues. How you gonna love God? You keep lying. Just tell the keep truth. Lying. I ain't all that. I messed up. I, I, I thought I was that man. Stop. Here's the thing: you ain't fooling nobody who's flowing in truth and revelation in the Holy Ghost. They know you full of it. Not full of the anointing. Full of lying and all that. Uh, and you hurt yourself. Amen. Yeah, amen. I ain't talking about y'all need to follow Christ the way I do. No, the devil is a lie. <laughs> Huh? God says, I'm not a man that I should lie. You shouldn't be a woman or a man that you just keep lying. Come on. Thank you for that one, amen. So Revelation 2, 6 says, we got to hate what he hates. Somebody say amen. 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 Somebody say, I want to be highly favored. I want to be highly favored. Well, I'm letting you know that, watch this, you're not just going to be highly favored because you're a child of God. Right. Right. Amen. That's why I'm giving you some principles. Anybody taking notes? Come on, God, one thing I love about God, he gives us all this fair chance and the same opportunities. Amen, 
Hey, That's why I remember when Cain messed up. He said to Cain, well, 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 if you would have done what Abel did, I would have blessed you. Now you wouldn't kill the man. Oh, you hear me? And here's the thing. Now you ain't got no favor on you. Get done. You ain't got to get jealous of nobody who the Lord's favoring. Do the things that they're doing. Watch it, which is doing what God tell them to do. And he'll favor you too. Thank you, Jesus. you can't stick up somebody's favor. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Let's just think about that. Yeah, I, I want the favor of God on me. Oh, you got to do what God tell you to do. Mm-hmm. So you're going to kill somebody because the favor of God's on them and you can't handle it. It's killing you with jealousy. Come on, jealousy. You're overbulling with jealousy and, and envy. Only, and, 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 and there they got it going on because they, they, do, they doing what God tell them to do. Let me help you. You can't stop a person that's doing what God tell them to do and he favored them because when he favored them, he's with them. Ask Joseph. Remember, I just preached the life of Joseph. Amen. Every attempt they tried, it didn't work. He it just kept rising to the top and then kept rising to the top. Why? Because when the favor of God is on you, the first part of the favor, God is with you. And every time that God was with Joseph, God, when God is with you, that's what causes the favor. Yes. Come on, somebody yes. to put you above and not beneath. Yes. God has yes. never, ever stayed below. He They throw him in hell and he end up in Bethlehem. Jesus, end up by the Come on. He's high and lifted up. Y'all better hear me. God said, look here. Hell can't even hold him down. Ain't nothing more than hell. And guess where he is now? He's not still in hell. He got up on the third day. He up in heaven on the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and I, saying, go, listen. Hey, I want y'all to hear well done like I did. The reason why I was highly favored on earth, because I did everything my daddy asked me to do. And if you would do the same thing, He'll favor you like he favored. He don't love you no more than he loved me, Jesus. Thank you. Man. How do we know? Because he wouldn't have Jesus died for us. My God. Yeah. It might seem like he loved us more than Jesus because he told him to die for you. For you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Thank my you. God. You are stepping, my man. It's baseball season. You are. You just hit a grand slam. Did you Amen. hear that? Amen. <laughs> How can you question him loving God, Jesus, more than us? Mm. Matter of fact, he even said this. Watch this here. Jesus even prayed this. Jesus himself, Father, the same love that you love me thank with. Thank you, Lord. Not only love them with it, put it in. Mm-hmm. Y'all better thank God for Jesus. Come on, Jesus knew the secret to being highly favored. Remember, there was a time Jesus didn't want to die for us. He said, Father, I pray that you take this cup, but nevertheless, not my will, but what? Die. He got his mind back on other people. He got his mind back on you. And the worst kind of death is crucifixion. He called it the joy. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. My God, can you imagine you dying the worst kind of way? And you say it was a joy because Al will be saved and Mom Jeanette will be saved and Monette will be saved and Larry will be saved and throw Devin up in hell, glory be to And your mom will throw Cordy up in there. Come on, you better hear me, sister. Man. Y'all better hear me. And he called it a joy. You know why it's a joy? Because it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. receive. Well, what did he give? He gave his life. He gave his precious blood so Mm. that you and I Mm. could live the lives that God calls us to live. And that's why it's a shame if we don't allow God to highly favor us because you don't want us just living amongst the people and there's no difference. Come on, somebody. How will we bring glory to his name? He wants to separate his own. And that's why he said to the children of Israel, I'm going to make my profit made to you all. I want to bless you, but not for your glory, for my glory, so they'll know there's no other God like Jehovah. Y'all don't want no word this morning. Y'all just want scrapple, turkey scrapple, and <laughs> eggs, grits, and all that stuff. Man, come on. We had all that, but it's bigger than that. Amen. Somebody say amen. I'm ready to curse right now. I talked <laughs> about Cain and Abel, so let's, let's, let's look at them. Let's look at Genesis 4 and 4. Ain't no way I can talk about this message. I'm talking about Cain and Abel. Amen. Amen. He all mad because God favored his brother. <laughs> and all he had to do is what his brother did. Yeah. Now, Amen. here's one of the things that sometimes gets us in trouble. Notice I said sometimes. All of them. You ready? Yes. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of the flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel, Abel's and his offering, 
But on Cain, his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was angry and his face was downcast. Man, lift your head up, punk. Yeah, you cry, baby. Amen. So Abel's offering found favor with God, but Cain's didn't. Isn't that what it says there? Yes. Come on. I want to make sure y'all see this. So here you see preferential treatment. You got two brothers. They both gave an offer. But one found favor and one didn't. Amen. Watch this here. Write this down. Giving gifts and offerings allows you to step into the favor of God. Amen. Why didn't God, why wasn't God pleased with, why was God pleased with one and not the other? One gave his best. And the other one didn't. He gave, but it wasn't heartfelt. No. It wasn't his best. Come on. You know, sometimes you can just give to let me just give something. And if you don't give cheerfully, if you don't, you know, watch this here, uh, give what the Lord desired you to give, you really gave in vain. Amen. Let Amen. me just do something. And I ain't talking about the ones who don't have nothing. Amen, amen somebody. Amen. Can I get a better amen than that? Amen. And so he accepted one offer, not other. So you got to give gifts and offers. No, I say gifts and offers. Gifts and offers. Amen. Yes. I ain't talking about tithing because that's supposed to be automatic. Amen. Somebody amen. say amen. So glory to God. Um, and you don't have to turn there, but Genesis 32 and 5 says, I have cattle and donkeys, sheep and goats, male and female servants. Now I am sending this message to my Lord that I may find favor what, in your in his eyes. Somebody say amen. And so amen. here, watch this here. You can see Jacob who found favor with Esau following these what gifts. Yeah. Look at this. Amen. Somebody said, well, I just showed it to you. God could bless you right there. Come on. Mm -hmm. I'm sending this message to my Lord that I may what, find favor in his eyes. Mm -hmm. I have cattle, donkeys, Sheep, goats, male and female servants. Man, somebody said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Jesus. Well, let's go to the next point. Amen. Genesis chapter six, verse seven, eight and nine. I could have just stayed with Proverbs, the first scripture mm -hmm. on this because it was right in there. Love, don't let not love and faithfulness leave you. Amen. Amen. But that's my next point. You gotta be faithful. You want favor with God? The Bible says a faithful man shall abound with blessings. Amen. All right. And so Genesis chapter six talks about my man Noah. Mm -hmm. Noah was faithful in a corrupt generation. Watch this here. He was. Versus uh, Genesis six, chapter six, seven, eight, nine. It says, so the Lord said, I'm just going to give you all scripture today. Ain't a lot of like speaking over it. The scripture says what I'm trying to say. So Noah so the Lord said, I will wipe from the face of the earth the human race that I have created and with the animals, the birds, the creatures that move along the ground from, for I regret that I ever made them. She told me, I'm sorry I even made, made people and these things. Amen. But Noah, somebody said, but Noah. But so Noah. here it is, everybody's corrupt. God says, man, I'm ready to wipe them all out. But how many know he had Noah? Watch it, remember, highly favored. Amen. Watch this here. When you highly favor, why does it the floods can't take you out? God will build you an ark above the floods. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Oh, you always rise up above the adversity and, and all the obscurities and all the other things. Come on, the setbacks and all that. Mm -hmm. So here it is in a place where it never rained before. Are oh, you hear me? God sends a flood like never before. Mm -hmm. Man, it goes over the highest mountain, but watch this here. Yeah. But here it is, Noah, because he's highly favored. My God, he'll put you above. My God. Mm -hmm. Y'all ain't hear me. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. And this is the account of Noah and his family. Amen. And it goes on. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. And he walked faithfully with God. Yes. Come on. God don't bless people who come in and out. Nah, you got to stay in there. Stay faithful. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. Which takes me to my next one. You got to be blameless. Noah was righteous and blameless. Somebody say amen. Amen. Write that down. He was blameless. He was righteous. Come on. Are you saying that? It said Noah was what? Being righteous and blameless. blameless. That's the key to finding favor. So now, not only being faithful, but you got to be what? Righteous and blameless. Mm -hmm. Somebody say amen. You can be faithful doing what God told you to do, but not doing it in the character he calls you to do it. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. You know, my definition of righteousness is doing it God's way. How many people are doing God's work, but not God's way? You serving, watch it here, but with an attitude. That's not God's way. Yeah, you're serving. That's what God say do. But you're not serving. Come on, somebody with the right attitude. That disqualifies you. My God. I'm amen. preaching to the amen. choir right now. Amen. Come on. Amen. Can somebody say amen? amen? And so Psalm 5 and 12, write this down. Psalm 5 and 12. Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. Surely. Somebody say surely. Surely. Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as a shield. Come on. You can be blessed with favor. So can I. And I may know favor is what leads to blessings. Mm. Ah. Surely you bless the righteous. Well, how do we bless? By favor. And when he favors you, that's the favor that causes you to receive blessings. Ah. See, blessings come as a result of you being favored. Hey. Oh, my God. Mm. See, when you go get ice cream, and you say 31 flavors. Mm. Well, 32 now, because my flavor is favor. Oh, I want that on top of it. Y'all not here, man. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Somebody say glory be to God. Glory be to God. Thank you. Come on, Esther 2 and 15, real quick. Y'all know Esther was favorite, so I want to show you how. Yes. yes. Thank you. When the Lord, when the when when the turn came for Esther to go to the king, she asked for nothing other than what Haggai the king unit was in charge of the harm suggested. In other words, she was submitted. Somebody say she was submitted. Submitted. No, no, no. I want to, you know, no, I want to ask, not me, but my leader who's in charge. She was submitted to her leader. Yeah. Somebody say submitted to her leader. And that would have said there? And she won favor because she was submitted. Um, people who are not submitted to their leadership and authority will never be fav highly favored. Amen. That crushes you. Somebody say amen. She showed how submiss she showed us that submission brings favor. She didn't take matters in her own hands. Somebody said she didn't take it. When the king asked her, she asked for nothing for herself. She didn't want to take matters in her own hands. Mm. So that's a key ingredient to finding favor. What is the key ingredient? The word that we hate the most, especially as black people, yeah. submission. Hello, somebody. Submission takes humility. Yes. Come on, somebody, and a confidence in God. That's why, why a lot of times we don't want to submit, because we don't want to be humble, which saved me to my next point. You got to be submissive, but to be submissive, you got to be humble. Do, uh, amen. Somebody said, thank you, Jesus. Somebody said, thank praise you. Lord. Watch this here. First Peter 5, 5, Sister Betty, says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace. Another word for grace is unmerited favor amen. to the humble. In other words, God will give you stuff you don't even deserve. But how much more he'll give you, come on, when you're doing things the right way, that's when you get highly favored. See, every Christian can get grace on them, get unmerited favor. Mm -hmm. You know what unmerited favor is? Favor you really didn't earn. Mm -hmm. But I ain't talking about that, but that's still good. Come on, don't get me wrong. I'd rather have favor I didn't earn than no favor at all. Oh. Right? That's just the love that our daddy has. Mm -hmm. Amen. Just like we give some of our children stuff they don't deserve. And why would we do that? Because God let it rain on the just and the unjust, mm -hmm. hoping that why is it, when you give them something they don't deserve, it may cause them to repent, knowing I should have got this, that my daddy's gracious. Oh my God, come on. So my mom is gracious. My mom gave me, I know I ain't deserve it. I got all F's. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. And they brought me a learning tablet. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you'll catch that later on. <laughs> they brought me a, a, a reader book. What do you call that? Thing? So yeah, amen. Somebody. <laughs> but God resists the proud, Larry. I'll always go to Larry on that one because he, man, he, he, he got a problem with prideful people. He called them Bishop Big Heads. Amen. He don't like Bishop Big Heads, the Big Head Bishops, the Big Head Christian, the person that think they're above everybody, the person think they're better than anybody, the person think they always right, the person think that they, 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 they just the next thing to God like nobody else. Mm. Mm. They even threw Jesus aside. Bump you too, Jesus. I'm there. <laughs> now he resists the proud. But he gives grace and favor to the humble. Yes. And that's what hurts us right now. Submission takes a humility. And Esther, the king asked her, what do you want? What? No, no, no. I don't want nothing for me right now to take care of it. How many know because of that? 
She got taken care of. She got put in position to save her people. Amen. Amen. But y'all know y'all would have been like, oh, yeah, oh, it's my turn. And they bump the kid. Get out of the way, Chuck. You know what I mean? It, it's about me. Nah, man. When you put others above yourself, stay submitted to your authority. That's one way. Nah, hey, God, bless my authority. That's that's a true order of submission. Amen. 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 Not to put her out there. But Sister Betty sent the offering I didn't ask for. She said, this is for you and Cordy. And I guess she said that because, you know, we'll give everything. Right. And I want you to know, Sister Betty, I usually would have said, let me get it to somebody. I took my wife out to dinner last night on you. Mm -hmm. I said, this is from Sister mm -hmm. Betty. And boy, we ate. Uh, um, I had. <laughs> and they said, how many crab cakes you want? One, no, man. Sister Betty sent me enough. I'm a king. And I give me two crab cakes. Give me some clam strips. Praise God. Man, we ate. Hey, come on. So, and have some money left over for dessert. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. I mean, I'm walking in my favor. I know how to receive it. Amen. Come on. Amen. I didn't ask for it. She'll tell you. But how I many know you ain't got to ask for it. When people see that you don't you do know, God to put somebody on your heart, on his heart, and then in your situation. Amen. Amen. Now, let me say this here. Favor don't just come on people who need something. Amen. I have my own money. But when you got favor, God still will do it. Somebody needs to hear me. Hmm. Sometimes they say, well, I don't need no favor. Man, let me, I, I take it. I when that guy named the price, my wife said, we can't pay that. I hit my wife later. Yeah, we can't. <laughs> hey, Come on. Even though we're going to give me more. But <laughs> I know what my neighbor just paid for his. Yeah. 38 yeah. big ones. Oh. And he ain't even get it screened in. We got all screened in. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I heard that one wow sound like she was close. That's how close God is with your faith. Mm, my God. Amen. So he resists the proud. Yes. And he gives more grace to the humble. And also it's humbling to see the bishop outside raking trees and all that. People come by. Amen. But I ain't too prideful to do that. Amen. I'm humble because I wanted to help the man. And by helping him, I helped myself. I was like, it looked good out there. And he was so happy because he worked all day. Then he had to he had to clean that up. And then it's so a little bit, it's a little less. I said, don't worry about it. When you come back Monday or Tuesday to finish up the job. I'm going to take care of this for you. He said, no, nah, you, you don't have to do that. I said, I know I don't. But I'm humble enough, y'all, that no job is too low for me. Amen. See, see, that's what's wrong. Some people want positions of authority. God will never allow me and my wife to get like that. I'm humble, y'all. Are Amen. you hearing me? Humble enough to say, no, nah, I'll help you. Come on. Amen. Pastor Charles had to move one time. He ain't had nobody to help me. He called me, said, can you pray? I said, pray for what? For me to have movers. I said, I'll be there. No, I don't want you to help. Good thing I went there. I said, yeah, I pray, but I'm going to tell you now, people don't show up and help you just volunteer to move. They, especially during the day, they got to take off a day of work, right, not yeah, get paid to help you. It didn't matter to me. Then I said, all of y'all, look at your age. Most of your friends ain't capable of moving up. I said, Charles, you're like 50-something now. Most of your friends ain't taking a day off, and if they could, they still wouldn't. Yeah. You better hope you get some young bucks, and you know how that is. It ain't two minutes. They sitting down on the phone like, oh, my God. <laughs> So, so I showed up and he said, man, I'm glad you showed up. We wouldn't have had nobody. But that's the kind of, oh, he said, I said, why can't I, you the apostle? Show me in the Bible. Paul was a tent maker. Amen. Apostle Amen. Paul worked his hands. Amen. You know what he said? In case you Negroes don't like what I preach, I'm going to make sure I don't have to live off of y'all. I learned that off Apostle Paul's sister, Ben. That's why he ain't got no problem. People say, man, you out there at the Y? Yeah, man, the Y gave me favor. They took a full-time position, made it part-time, and then told me whenever you can't make it, we understand you got ministry. We just don't want nobody to take the job. And on top of that, we're going to double your salary. I ain't no fool. Come on, man. Smokey ain't no fool. I said. So they said, can you please take the job? We ain't hiring nobody. Downtown gave them a problem, saying, why didn't y'all post this position? It's a leadership position. They said, we don't want it, but we got the person we want. And then they said, why, why are you paying any more of that kind of money? The director fought for it and then told me afterwards what took so long for them to get my, my thing. They said they fought her. And she, she finally won, saying, y'all don't know what this person is doing for a program. I ain't had to fight preferential treatment. Amen. And I ain't going to lie to you. It's good. That's all I'm going to say to you. It's good. Amen. Amen. Somebody said, thank That's what favor can do. Amen. I wasn't in there fighting for that. I, I started there as a volunteer. Oh, let's just start there. 
me and my wife went there and volunteered helping. And now they said, well, we want to pay. I said, no, I'm good, but amen. I took the money. Yes, I did. Thank you, Sister Betty, for praying for me. Amen. Here's next. You got to be honest. Proverbs 11. Let's look at that in verse 1. You ain't honest, man, on your taxes and stuff like that. You ain't got to try to get an extra dollar right. and cheating on your taxes. All right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 11 and 1 says, the Lord detests Detest what? Dishonest scales. Mm. Why are you still lying? That line ain't getting you nowhere. Mm. Come on. Get truthful with you, others around you. Mm. Hello, somebody. That's like me. I got a spouse. I'm sneaking by and this and that. We're trying to get out of this and that. How many know eventually going to show up? Amen. I just say, you know what? Hey, bump the budget this week. <laughs> this is what I did. Ah, it's going to find out. Amen. Okay. The Lord detests designer scales, but accurate ways finds favor with him. Now, we remember we talked about Joseph, so I ain't going to go there. I'm just going to quote Genesis 39. It says, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his own household and entrusted him to the care of everything he owned. Remember in Genesis 39, he got put in Potiphar's house. And then y'all know the rest of the story. Potiphar, the right line on the right. Bottom line, he went in there and boom, went to the top. Then his wife lied on him, went to prison, and then in the prison, the ran, rose to the top. Somebody said he was highly favored. Highly favored, yes. Then went to prison, they forgot about him, and next thing you know, then someone remembered a couple of years later, amen, somebody. But let me tell you something, when you highly favored, it might take some time, but God will remember you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Lord. Somebody said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I, this pastor used to always pray this over me. Pastor Eccles, pray that you get more wisdom. I used to get offended. I mean, why do you keep praying I get more wisdom? Then I realized he was praying something good over my life. Over you, yeah. Because that's my last thing for the day. Amen. You ain't going to get no favor without wisdom. You got to have wisdom. Mm -hmm. Write this down. Wisdom is the key to faith. Mm. And Solomon how many know Solomon was faithful? And he yeah. wrote all through Proverbs. He made it clear all through the book of Proverbs. That's where you see all them favorite scriptures in Proverbs. Because Solomon was highly faithful. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Proverbs 8 and 35. Solomon writes, for those who find me, talking about wisdom, find life and receive favor from the Lord. Amen. See, when you got the wisdom of God, you have the ability to do what others can't do who have not. Knowledge yeah. gives you the ability yeah. to figure out and work. Yeah. Wisdom gives you the ability to work out knowledge. So yeah. a lot of people got knowledge. They got college knowledge and, and this and that. But wisdom comes from God. Wisdom. Yes, yes. And wisdom gives you the ability to apply knowledge the right way. Like, you got to be smart to make a bomb. But that's not wisdom. That's knowledge. Because right. wisdom will have you, come on, somebody, not do something to make something that will destroy. Why? Because wisdom is from God and of God. Anybody here? So wisdom gives you the ability to work knowledge correct. You got to be knowledgeable to make a bomb. But wisdom will tell you, don't make bombs and start blowing up subways. You understand what I'm saying? Mm, mm, mm. Yes. Thank you for that one, amen. Luke 2.52. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Man. So Jesus had to grow in favor and wisdom, then so do we. Somebody say amen. We got to grow in it. Somebody say amen. amen. You will see the favor of God in your life when you grow in wisdom. Jesus grew in wisdom. And the more wisdom you get, the Bible says this, that in wisdom, left hand is riches and honor. Huh. That's one way God favors you. Preferentially, he honors you. Come on. And so in all you're getting, get you know what I'm saying, but, but yeah. if you, any man lack wisdom, God said, just ask for it. We ain't got to walk around like, duh, well, boy, come on. Everything ain't supposed to be a mystery. Can I just go there and stop being religious, talking about the Lord work mysterious ways. That's, God don't want to be a mystery to his own. One work of the Holy Spirit is to reveal the mind, the word, the heart of God, the understanding of the word yeah. of God. You ain't supposed to be, I can't stand where you're going to, well, uh, 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 oh, man, just walk around talking about, you know, uh, 
the Lord, hey man, the Lord's still working mysteries. No, that's for people who don't know him. Mm. God don't want to be a mystery to his children no longer. You, what, what kind of mom or dad would you be if you was a mystery mom and dad? Everything was based on mysteries. What does the word mystery mean? Anybody want to look it up? Let's look it up so we'll know what we're saying when we say that stuff. Let's look it up. Come on. Because that's what wisdom says right now. Something that is difficult or impossible to understand or explain. Something that is difficult or impossible, or impossible to understand, to, understand to explain, or, or to explain. That's not God. <laughs> that is not a good mother or father, and it's not God. So your mom and dad in the natural was difficult to understand. God says it this way, and all you're getting, get understanding. Paul prayed for the church in Ephesus that we, they would get to know God. So if God wanted us to, if God wanted to be mysterious to us, then why would that be one of the most effective prayers in the Bible that we get to know? Him? Why would that be vital and important? Because i tell you why, because when he's a mystery to you, then you can't trust him. That's why you better pay attention. Are you hearing me? Because watch this, if you only can, let me, let me help you. If you only can trust what you know. So now I'm guessing and speculating whether or not I have no understanding. I do not know if this will work. So now I'm playing any, many, mighty mo with God. And that is not the God we serve. He wants you getting wisdom. He wants you getting revelation. Come on, the greatest gift given to man was the revelation. What the the rock of revelation knowledge? What what the word is saying? God, Jesus. What kind of preacher would that be? It's like these preachers we had today use all these big words. They don't understand them, and you know we don't. But they sound good. They sound big. And then afterwards, everybody's more confused. And now God becomes a mystery because the preacher has become mysterious, mysterious in their delivery trying to be big and deep, are you hearing me? And all they did was left us confused with no understanding. And so the God who we ought to know, our daddy better than anybody else, we don't know him because of all this foolishness in the pulpit, the pulpit tier and all that, even when they introduce them. What the heck is a pulpit tier? I'll tell you, come on, I don't even <laughs> preach by the pulpit. But then we get all caught up in all this and then we make it about that and we get all excited. And that don't explain, pulpit here don't explain who God is. It's the Bible. It's the word of God. Come on. And that's why in all you're getting, get understanding. Mm -hmm. Oh, you hear me? The early church searched the scriptures daily. Mm -hmm. Wisdom comes from you spending time with the word, spending time with God. Somebody need to hear me. And favor comes as a result of you having wisdom. My God, I, I'm, I'm going to drop the book right there. I got some more. Oh, you hear me? Ways favor can come. Being merciful. And some other, but I'm I'm done. Uh, 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 well, I just, I'm dropping the mic like Carolyn did the other day. I just dropped the mic. <laughs> I gave you enough. And all these things are simple. They're not hard to do. Come on. Like Larry said, they're so simple, they're hard. But I'm going to take it further. No, they're so simple. Keep it simple. Don't make what's yeah. simple hard. Come yeah. on. Yeah. My God, come on. Just get in agreement with God and yeah. whatever he tells you to do. Here's the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear of God and obey his commandments. And I'm telling you, at the end of the day, you will find favor with God and man. Mm -hmm. And I ain't talking about any God. I'm talking about hiding favor. Come on. I pray now, God, that, that the sound of my voice, whatever adjustments they need to make, whether it's humility, whether it's submission, whether it's obedience, God, I don't know whether it's loving you, whether it's loving people. I don't know, God, whether it's giving God the right way, God, and mm -hmm. with the right heart, God. I don't know, God, what their issue is, their dilemma, but whatever adjustments they need to make, I pray that they make them even now. I pray if there's lack in wisdom, God, they just ask for you. Glory be to God. Oh, God, I just pray now that your people will humble themselves and obey you, submit to you, love you, love people so that they can be highly favored. Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I'm telling you right now, I wish... I was explaining to Larry last night. One time, Larry came out here and told me everything that happened. I don't even remember. He told me. One day, man, somebody drove by, and we had, like, rocks in the front of our house. And the guy said, I got all this extra payment stuff on my truck. And, hey, man, I'll give it to you for $1,000. It cost, like, $3,500 a door. 
I said, I'm on my way to uh, Smyrna Beach. So I got the money, but I'd rather have that money for my vacation. He said, pay me when you get back. He didn't even know me and dropped it on there. So I said, I got one better than that. I'm going to give you a check. And the day I come back, you can cash it. I just like to make sure when I'm away, you know, amen. And got back, boom, payment done. And it was perfect. Because look at this. How about you got to be away when they do your payment? Right. See, you better hear me. He could have came. It, it was all right. Come on. We had to take the car anyway. Pay, watch it. So the driveway's clear. Come back. I'm almost rolled by the house. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> Come on. Then a guy comes and builds a deck, wrap it around our house for $200. I ain't talking about what this guy did. See, I can talk about that, but then I'm talking about the new favorite. The new favorite is what the guy, another guy, Jesse. Come on. And let me help you. Favor is not just based on a person because the one man who built my kitchen for $175 did some work here, built a bathroom for $175. He had $175 anointing. He just couldn't go over $200. He did all this work. Now he died. I did his funeral and all that, but watch it. But see, it was, was just predicated on a person, then it would have dry up. Right. Then God just sent somebody else. Y'all not hear me. Thank you. See, favor yes. don't stop. That's right. That's even right. though he uses me. And it don't stop with some of y'all just try to kiss up to a person. And God says, nah, if you just submit to me, I'll favor you. And yeah. I, I thought nobody could ever give prices like him. But I thought I was one. His price was the best. But man. I'm telling you right now, this guy comes right in. And it's not a knock. Now, how about this? The guy who died, the favor that's on me, fell on, and he was a master carpenter in his development. This guy now getting all his clients. Wow. Because his wife and it was niece and all of them rolled by, come on, and saw the work he's doing. So look how God worked. So I, I talked to him about it. He, I said, man, the guy who did this, he, I paid this and that. Now he knows it because he's doing that guy's wife's house. And three weeks. Come on. Ah, Favor wow. is still gone. So now her husband died and took care of her. So she, you know, people try to rip her off. But now she got favor too. Come on. See, that favor is contagious. Oh. It's connected to who's connected to you. See, see, when 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 her husband died, she didn't ask anybody to do his funeral. She didn't ask her old pastor. Started a lot of stuff too. She said, no, it's only one bishop. Why is it here? Why did she pick us? I'm white. I mean, he's white, I'm black. He come from a family that was racist because we cared for him and loved him. He was at our house almost every day. She said he never, ever, ever clung to anybody like you and your wife. This man would just come down, just talk. And every once in a while he'd slip a curse word. In. I said, hey, man, that's where you are. <laughs> but he could, he, he could talk to us because he knew we cared. Right. And sometimes you doing for other people, just give them an ear. Amen. Come on. Amen. And then he would say, I know I was wrong. And I would tell you already know it. So yeah, I didn't have to beat him up. See, he knew. But he also came here because he felt peace. But also he saw how we were always reaching out, helping people. My point I'm saying to you is that favor don't die when people die, even though God favors, gives you favor with him and man. Because then he'll speak to somebody else as Sister Betty was doing this. That means there's a term in basketball when a player get hurt, next man up. And God has a next man up with favor. Even somebody who was favored you decide, sometimes the people who favor you start getting jealous when they see all the favor you operate in, and they'll stop giving to you. I watched that happen. And they'll come up with these ways. God told us to do this. And I said, okay, guess what? All right. And then God just will replace that. Come on. And Sister Betty did it go like this, y'all. He'll keep it coming long as you keep doing what God tells you to do. Ain't nobody here right now, so I'm going to just shut it up. Stop putting all your trust in people when they ain't got no heaven or hell to put you in. And when the bank accounts down here shorten up, ain't no shortage in God's bank account. Amen. I'd rather please God than man. And one way to keep favor on you, love God. And how do I know you, you love God? By keep loving people. Amen. I love y'all so much. I told you the truth. Pray for that you walk in this thing. God, I can go on and on and on with what God is doing. But it's just, you know, enough of that. But notice I said what God is doing. Yeah. I couldn't make this up. I can't, I don't name my own price. I ain't put a gun to nobody here and say, charge me this. You ain't got to stick nobody up for favor. God's just going to do it because he'll speak to the person. You ain't got to connive. And so just go ahead and receive the favor, God. If you receive it, say amen. Amen. Come on, let's get ready for communion. I ain't mean to go off, y'all, but I went buck. Thank you, Sister Betty. She waving like that fire. Someone, 
man, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like Jeremiah, man. Like, it's fire shit up in my bone. I think I went to bed around four in the morning. Hey, Amen. Seriously. Huh? Why? Because I was hosting some people. I wanted to make sure they were there. They had to say, man, I'm going to bed. I would have stayed up as long as they wanted to. I kept saying, do you want some ice cream? I kept saying, do you want some fruit? That's it. So I, I wasn't looking at me how tired I am. Nah, my guests got in really late. See, when you, about people, you don't care about, you. it ain't matter. I can set up all night. Matter of fact, we went out on a new deck, me and uh, Larry. You know what I mean? Monet, Monet told my wife something that she might have thought. They out there getting bit by the mosquitoes. We had one mosquito out there. I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> hey, my favor was on us because I ain't got the screen door on yet. So my ball to screen, the guy got to come back with the door. Mosquitoes could have came in, but they knew me and Larry was out there and they knew we were God anointed. <laughs> See, when you're so full of the, uh, the power of God, a mosquito will bite you and say, uh-uh, that blood is different. Y'all not here. Hey, watch this here. A mosquito try to bite that anointing, is it? You know what I mean? Oh, they're anointed. You know what I'm saying? That's how anointed we are. Mosquitoes said, one mosquito came and said, you can't touch them. I tried, mm -hmm. but it's something on them. <laughs> Amen. Somebody said, thank you, Jesus. Well, not one mosquito came in there, and it was raining and all that. You know, they like rain. Can somebody say amen? Amen. And so I'm telling you right now, what I'm hearing in my spirit, Sister Betty, your testimony was just the beginning of everybody else's. Sister Betty said they took some of her social security, but her giving didn't go down. It stayed up. And now she says money just coming. I mean, how you go in your house and find a thousand dollars? Well, I know she submitted because I did the same thing. I found a thousand dollar check that I had over a year. You know, you flowing if you don't miss a thousand. Somebody wrote me a check, <laughs> and it was in my suit, and I was like, I ain't wearing no more suits for a while. 20, right? <laughs> hey man, I pulled that suit out. So I said, Let me wear a suit today, and I pulled it out on the last day of the year that the check was good. Wow! <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Cause you know you got a year yeah and then the holy spirit says now nah, man give it back to the people they really ain't want you to have it anyway because they would have called and said why didn't you cast the check that's the check right that's just what he said and i did it hmm. amen and i'm like these niggas owe me money they owe me like 10 grand and you want me to give back to that at least i can get nine thousand up now they only owe me nine i said nope let them let them have it you talk about humility Talk about submission. You talk about love. You talk about all this message right here, yeah. all coming together. They already owe me about ten thousand dollars. God they ain't paid me. Come on, almost a year. Well, actually, they owe me more than that. But now, get the one thousand back that I do have. <laughs> that was dated almost a year ago since they paid me. Give it back. I'm so glad I obeyed God, Sister Ben. He yeah. said, "Man, that little bit of money ain't greater than what I want to do." He was working in me. He was working in my wife. Do you know? Right after that, we see them in a restaurant. Uh-oh, we see them in a restaurant after they owe me over 10 grand, after all this happened. And then the Holy Spirit said, pay for their meal. Pay for their meal. My wife was like, that's why I love my wife. You know you want to <laughs> She's like, I don't know about that. She's, she's, she's like, I don't know about that. Can I keep it real, Miss Beth? I said, honey, I know what I'm hearing, and that's why she submitted to me. So anyway, as soon as I go there, I said, the Lord told me pay for your meal. Now they done. They ordered more. <laughs> so I had to look at my wife like, I think I missed God, but I did miss God. <laughs> no, right. That was God now working on me. Okay, right. let me hear you now. I told my wife, it's okay. It's okay. And we played for that meal, man. Never asked them for yeah. the 10 grand they owed us. 11 grand now, if you count the thousand I gave back. You know what I mean? It's done. But I said, God says, nah, I I'm working something in you. My God. See, some of y'all holding people over a grudge for a court a cup of sugar. Remember back in the day, I don't know if they do that, but we used to borrow sugar from our neighbors. Okay. <laughs> Look at Sister Betty, you know what I'm talking about. The payday sometimes okay. didn't come soon enough. Y'all not okay. hearing me. Okay. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Hey, okay. we borrowed butter. See, y'all borrowed money from bank. Okay. We borrowed butter. It was bad. We borrowed sugar. Come on, somebody. Flour. That's right. That's right. We ain't borrowed chicken and burgers and all that. We just right. take the, the, the other stuff. Okay. Amen. Okay. Eggs. Can I get one egg till payday? I mean, come on. <laughs> And Amen. I tell you, the communities Amen. look out for each other, Amen. and nobody was prideful. Amen. People know Amen. your French toast had no eggs in it when you ain't had no eggs in it. So, so you can't, you know what I mean? You ain't front. You know what? Uh-uh, I'm going to make French toast today, but tomorrow, payday, I ain't got no eggs. <laughs> not, not. 
Come on, Amen. man. I never Amen. forget those days. That's when a community lived like a church. Amen. We looked out for one another and we weren't prideful. Yes. yes. Come on, we didn't look at it and we paid back. Because we were honest. Come on, we put all these friends yes. We were honest. Yes. We were humble. Ain't nobody hearing me. We loved each other. Man, your kid did something and you weren't there. It was like you were there because you they smacked you. That's right. That's oh, right. My neighbors right. would smack me and check me. Now they don't nobody want nobody saying nothing to their old roofless kids. Kids, <laughs> kids Amen. bad as hell. Amen. 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 Your mom and dad had to work, but Sister Betty didn't. I got an eye on Come on. Amen. Mm -hmm. Sister Betty can grip them up back then. I'm telling you, it's a whole new day right now. Right. That's right. Oh, so I don't know how we got on it, but stick a button. Sister Betty, I got one. Can I borrow some lard? Remember that old white thick lard? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody got sick, though. Think, think about it. See, see, I, I, let me just say this here. I believe God has so much favor on us. Old bacon grease, we use a old, old wheat. Over and over. And nobody had high cholesterol. Nobody <laughs> had heart attacks. Come on. I mean, don't, don't, don't. That, that we so blessed. Ah. Amen. I just Thank can't you. explain this. Thank you, I believe God put some favor on us. Come on. Yes. Huh? Yes. Come on. Yes. How many of y'all remember that? We say that. Don't you throw that grease out, boy. Amen. This old Nancy grease. That's right. Man, everything tastes like bacon burgers. Come on. Bacon chicken. Oh, you hear me? You better not throw that old grease out. And it got harder and harder every day. Monday, it was hard. Tuesday, it was really hard. <laughs> Wednesday, it was like lard because it started turning white. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. And don't let me go there with the cheese coming in a can. Mm. <laughs> you mean the block? Y'all yeah, remember cheese? What, what, no, no, the government block. cheese or no, in the block. It's in the block. Yeah, in the block. Y'all know what I'm talking about? The mm -hmm. block. We all was in jail, C block, cheese block. Yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, that cheese, let me tell you something. You ain't had a grilled cheese. That's right. I ain't had a real grilled cheese since. I ain't trying to go back to, to those days, but let me tell you something. Amen. He put a grace on the grilled cheese. The grilled cheese. <laughs> that cheese was good and ain't nobody, come on, had cholesterol problems and, mm. and all that stuff. Mm. I just believe God graced us. Come on, because you know yes. the ingredients are not really all that good because we were working together and we was loving each yes. other. And yes. that's what causes God's favor to come up on us. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Come on, you yes. eat two bad days of sugar today and you got diabetes. Come on. I mean, if we and we drank Kool-Aid. Come on. And yes, we some right. sugar. Oh, let me go there. Did I say sugar? We borrowed sugar, man. That's and right. we didn't need no sugar in that Kool-Aid like that. We put that. That's why we <laughs> needed sugar all the time. Cause we drank, ain't no wonder all this green tea and all, you know what I mean? Right. Kool-Aid. And you can it's sparkling. Mm. What are we fancy now? Let me let me do this communion because 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 I don't went back because God been favoring us, y'all. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Do they sell Lord anymore? I just want to know. Yes. I they have do? a thing, I have a can of Crisco in my in, in a recipe oh, I my. have. You ain't had no fried, you ain't had no fried chicken till you fried in that Crisco. And I'm to and look, pop, 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 pop. You like Ooh. I, <laughs> no, and you put the lid on top and that thing popping up. Like, pop, pop. <laughs> Hey, let me have my wife do communion so we take the arm and get out of here. We have too much fun right now. You know what? This is how our life going to be because that favor coming on. It's going to be so good, man. And all we're going to do is want to laugh, 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 laugh. <laughs> the pill Thank come. You, God. Oh, Thank God, you. God got that pressure check. Thank you, you God. Amen. <coughs> Amen. That was so powerful. But you said when we had a sense of community, God kept us. because our heart. That's so powerful. So um, the word says that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread and he said, take it, eat it. And when we do it, we do it in remembrance of him, remembering what he did for us at Calvary, remembering how he laid his body down and how he shed yeah. his blood for the remission of our sins and for us to be made whole and for us to be um, healed and to be kept and to be favored and prospered. So we thank you, Jesus, for what you did on the cross for us on Calvary. And we thank you for how you got up with all power. And then you gave that power to us. And now you reside on the right hand of the father. But we do this to remember that day, to remember what you did and what you did for us. So we take the bread and we break it and eat it.
in the cup, which represents his shed blood. We'll drink that now. And even though Carolyn wasn't there, she's going to sing us a song. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day, One day when, when I was, I was lost, Jesus. Did she freeze on us? I know it was the blood. Well, we Oh. He hung her voice oh. on high. Oh, Miss Betty, take us on home. <laughs> she can on you. See how the devil work? The devil try to kill our song. Come on, Miss Betty, take us home. The devil try to take our, our song. Sister Betty can't on mute. She's back. That's because, okay. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. Come on, Sister Betty. One day when I was lost, Jesus mm -hmm. died on the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Come on. Couldn't say a mumbling word. I couldn't say a mommy word. I couldn't say a mommy word for me. One day. When I was lost, my Jesus died on the cross. And I know it was a blood for me. Amen. Thank you, Carolyn. Thank you, Sister Betty. You, you know, Carolyn, I think you got to get that lard out your house. <laughs> <laughs> it was too thick. It stopped. It stopped on died. It's, it, it ain't stop your blood from flowing, but it stopped your boy from. I, I, get that old bacon grease out. Come on, you breast now, girl. <laughs> no, it's one recipe I have that I use. That that's the only thing I have to. Is it what pie crust or something? No, I don't even remember what it is, and I ain't never opened it. It's in my. You ain't got to just. You ain't got to justify. I just didn't know they sold it anymore. Cause I might know, get me some Crisco cause ain't no, hey, I fried that chicken back then. Huh? Yeah. I didn't know they still sold Crisco, huh? Cause yeah. this other stuff costs too much money. That's the other thing. That large stuff was cheap. <laughs> it ain't cheap huh? no more. And our, hey, <laughs> where they found out you black colors cook that's so right. well, cause it was, they found your secret like to what wings. made your like chicken, that's wings. What chicken wings. wings. But that's with everything, with chitlins, with everything now. You, I mean, it's in the, it's in the good part of the store now. 